Hi, I'm Ari Mapur, and today I'm going to show you how to create your own smart IoT device using an ESP8266 and a few push buttons. So join me and let's get started. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to put together the circuit. If you see in the bottom left corner of the screen, you've got the circuit diagram that can be found also in the article that goes along with this video. And if you see right here, the demonstration I'm going to be doing is on this prototyping board. Uh, what I've got here is a few different components. I've got some jumper wires. I've got some 10K resistors, some smaller jumper wires, which I'm going to use to jump off the bus voltage. I've got my node MCU and my push button. So let's get started. So now you can see that I've got everything hooked up. If you see right over here, the push button is connected to 3.3 volts. I've set up a bus right over here. I've tapped off the 3.3 volts directly onto my plus sign over here. This is going to propagate all across uh, this board over here. Now, I'm also connecting the other side of the push buttons respectively to the DIO inputs, uh, the D0 and the D1. I've also got my pull down resistors. These are 10K ohm resistors that are both connected to ground, if you can see over here. So now we're going to walk through how to set up the IFTT, if this then that web service. Uh, this is what's going to connect your IoT device, in this case, the ESP8266, to your smart devices. In this case, I have a wise light bulb <clears throat> that I want to connect to. Um, I have a series of light bulbs, or maybe I have a smart speaker or something like that. This is going to enable that instead of using an Alexa or a Google Home or something like that. We're going to do that right here using this service. So let's get started. If you see, I've created an account and I even have some devices that I've created already, I'm going to create a new one. So once you've set up an account, logged in, go to the top right corner, click on create. It's gonna take us to a new page. And on this page, you'll see there is an add button under if this, there are two conditions here. There's the if this, then that. So in this case, we wanna first start with the if condition. And the if condition, what we're doing is we're creating a webhook. It's basically sending an HTTP request. So I'm going to type in webhook. And there are two different types of webhooks that we can use. One with a JSON payload, which is a little bit more complicated. You can basically send different variables. One is just a very basic web request. So I'm going to go select the web request. We're going to make this pretty simple. And in this case, I'm going to create an event name that's also, again, very simple. Let's call it lights underscore on. We're going to click on create trigger, and that's going to create a trigger. So now we've created the if case. Now we need to tell it what to do. That's the condition. And now we want to tell it what to do after it's received that condition. So basically, something will send a web request, and then that will happen. So let's click on add over here. Now I've got uh, wise light bulbs. So I'm going to add that in here. I've already connected my WISE account. So if you can see here, it takes me straight to this page. Normally, if you're connecting some smart speaker, or some other WISE device, or some other uh, smart home device, you'll have to authenticate directly with that server and put in all your login information. Once you've authenticated, you'll get to a page that looks like this. In this case, I want to turn on light bulbs. So I'm going to click on Turn Bulb On. And now, because I've authenticated with my account, it's going to show me all the different light bulbs that I have here. I have six light bulbs in my living room. I don't have any other light bulbs. I'm actually going to tell it to turn on all my lights at the same time. And I'm going to create an action. Now, I'm using just the basic account, so I will not be able to make fancy uh, different actions based on that. You can create a whole series of actions, like turn on this bulb and then change this one blue and then change it red. and flash them and do all sorts of different things. I can't do that with the basic account. You can always upgrade and do some more fancier stuff. After I've done all this, I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And if you look at the title, I can change the title, but it says if maker event lights on, meaning if I send a web request containing this, this text over here, which we'll get into lights on, then turn on all the lights. Okay. And then I'll hit finish. Now, in order to understand how we're going to send that web request, I need to now go into my settings and figure out how to do all of this. So in the top right corner where you see this little person over here, I'm going to click over here, click on my services. 
And if I scroll all the way down to webhooks, it's going to explain to me how to do all these different webhooks and everything like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on documentation. And now it's basically telling me how to use my webhooks with the key and everything. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, your key, this is private. You don't want to share this with anybody. I'm going to regenerate my key after this. And uh, my event, which we called lights on, if you see over here, it will now auto generate this web URL that I can use. So if I copy and paste this into a new browser, it will then turn on my lights. And subsequently, we're going to want to go ahead and do the same thing again with lights off. So if I went back and I created a new event, so now you see I have if maker event lights on, then turn on all lights. I can go ahead and do the same thing again where I create if this webhooks receive a web request lights off. Create trigger, then that wise. And then I'm going to tell it to actually turn the bulb off. Again, all of my lights create action, continue, and that's it. Now, when we went back over here with these webhooks, this is the URL that I'm going to use in the code later on that you'll see. Just keep in mind that this is using HTTPS later on, we'll discuss it, but we in the example will be using HTTP. So take this code over here, again, let's say lights off, take this URL and we're going to use this later. Copy it and we're gonna use this for later. And this concludes the portion of setting up the IFTTT, IFTTT environment. So I'm just gonna demonstrate a little bit on how to set up the software itself on the ESPA266 module, in this case, the Node MCU. This code can be taken directly from the article. The link is down below in the description. We're going to copy and paste it into an Arduino environment. We're going to, of course, get everything configured. If you aren't familiar with how to configure your Node MCU device, the ESPA266, you can pull the article in the link also down below for getting started with the A2 ESP A266. Now, there are a few things we need to change in this code, otherwise it's pretty much ready to go. First of all, there are two defines at the top that we need to change. One is the SSID, that's the router name, that's the name of your network. So when you connect to Wi-Fi on your phone, on your computer, there's a name that you set up. Uh, in this case, mine, I'll just make it up, my router and my password will be something like 12348888812. Okay. And this is what it's going to use to connect. Now, remember, this is public. So if you're going to push your code publicly, do not put these keys in here because people will be able to get into your home router. The other thing that we want to do is we want to get our HTTP web request URL that we got from the IFTTT website. So in the previous step, we set that up. And we got our, our key in addition to that HTTPS um, request. Now, again, we're not using HTTPS in this example. We're just going to use HTTP. Um, this is insecure. You just want to do this for testing later on. If you actually are going to be using this definite for, you know, more um, future, if you want to use this for to keep it going all the time, you probably want to be using some sort of secure. HTTP, and there are examples. Again, you can consult with the companion article that goes along with this video for more details on how to set up HTTPS with the ESP8266. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Remember, again, this is also your key. You don't want to publicly expose this. I'm going to regenerate my key later on. I'm going to copy that here. Like I said, you definitely do not want to be sharing this with people later on, but uh, for the purposes of setting all this up, we'll, we'll do this now. So I go ahead over here, uh, remember to remove HTTPS. And it looks like the quotations over here copying from the article uh, were a little bit uh, different fonts. So we want to use just a standard font. Better to be safe than sorry, just go ahead and change the quotes right here. Copy. Paste that, and again, replacing the HTTPS with HTTP. Everything else is pretty much ready to go. I'll just walk through it really quickly so you understand what's going on. 
in the setup function, if you're unfamiliar with setup in Arduinos, uh, this is everything it does to get the whole Arduino set up. It's going to run once. Then it will run through this whole loop function. I have one function that I've created here. It's called run HTTP request. This is using the ESP8266 drivers to configure and set up and send an HTTP request. Basically, it's like pasting a URL in your browser and hitting go. So this is what this function does. What I'm saying over here is, hey, if we've received a push on that on button, go ahead and make that request with lights on. If I received a request with the off button, go ahead and run that lights off function. And look how I've changed that right here right now. I've changed it to lights off versus lights on. And it'll run this in a loop. There's a little bit of a delay. I've also added another delay after setting up the HTTP request at the very bottom over here because I don't want somebody to keep hitting the button and turning on, turning off and uh, messing up your lights or overloading the server. In this case, they might ban you if you're hitting too many times. So that's pretty much the gist of the code. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit verify, then plug in your ESB8266 device and hit upload. You should be able after that to hit the on button on your device and the off button and watch your lights or whatever you have, whichever smart device you have turn on and off. So we've just configured our RFTT broker service. We've loaded up the code on the ESP8266 Node MCU device. And most importantly, we've put our circuit together. What I'm gonna demonstrate over here is I'm going to be turning on and off the lights. If you could see right now, the lights are currently on in my living room. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. So turning it off is gonna be the second button that I've configured here. And now you see the lights have now just turned off in my living room. I'm gonna go ahead and hit that D0 button to turn on the lights in my living room, and you'll see the lights just came on. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you wanna get started with some other videos similar to this one, please have a look at the rest of the YouTube channel and subscribe to this video and the rest of this channel. Thanks, and thanks for watching.